Key art or cover art is usually the first artwork that players of a game will see. It's the artwork on the box. It's the artwork on the Steam profile. I recently did some key art for Severed Steel. It's kind of why I've been away so for for a while. <laughs> Just uh, it was an indie game produced by Digirati, and it's it's a fun, fast-paced like parkour game with voxels, which is like the next generation of pixels. Uh, but it's really cool. It was really awesome, and having a chance to do this key art for this indie game was actually really awesome because I didn't have to sign the NDAs. So it was kind of nice, um, you know. They they're very open to their player base about everything they were doing. <laughs> And it was really, it was a really chill, fun experience. And so because everything has been open, you know, I feel pretty, pretty confident that we could just talk about this. I think that a lot of artists should try to make key art, even if they're not doing any, any key art for any video games. But now the reason for that is because, I mean, when you, when you see key art or, or co I'm just going to call it cover art for people who don't understand what that is. <laughs> when you see cover art for a game, what you see is this generally dynamic shot of the player character and the environment and doing the thing. Thing, you know, the main mechanics of the game. If it's a shooter, they're shooting something, you know, or if, if it's like a builder, they've got the, the the architecture that they're messing with or, you know, whatever. So for the key art for this game, uh, I was given a beta access. So I played it a bit and it was really fun. It was really cool. And I talked to the, the team and they were like, okay, so the main point is you got this, this woman steel and she's doing this running and jumping and she's got a cool cannon arm that can blow stuff up and kill a bunch of dudes. And they're going to be just waves of enemies are going to come at you and you got to try and find a way to move through these interesting levels. There's going to be a lot of sliding, jumping, flipping, shooting, blowing stuff up, mass destruction, uh, because the character that you play is, is like this one person army against an actual army. And it's really cool. It's really fast paced, really awesome. And it is a really fun game, by the way. You should definitely check it out. In the background, though, while I'm talking about this, is going to be some artwork when I don't have pictures up because I didn't record this process because this, this process could take forever. So it's it's and usually there's NDAs involved. So I didn't actually record the process of creating this key art. But in the background, it's going to be some artwork work that I made with a uh, young con it's like it's a fan piece it's like a destiny halo crossover it's just a cool piece also it would be pretty decent cover art by the way not bad not bad not the best and we're gonna go into why so with key art you have the very unique opportunity to very quickly show and introduce uh, mechanics environment basic story elements uh, main characters you know whatever message and whatever thing or person you want to introduce you have that opportunity to do at a glance so you got to find out you know what you prioritize as the most important aspect of the game and then you're going to want to show that which in the beginning of this uh, process which we're going to get into really quickly is is your your greatest opportunity to really flesh out what you want to convey as a message unless you yourself are like the key uh, individual who really just made the game like if, if you're just an indie developer who just wants to make a fun passion project for example uh, unless you unless that's you <laughs> in every other aspect you are going to sit down with the marketing team with the developers with you know the production company with whoever and you're going to make some thumbnails which are like rough drafts just like the ones here. Uh, these are the thumbnails I made for Severed Steel. This, these are the rough drafts that I submitted to the team and I was like, all right, so here's a couple of ideas and you'll notice that they have different movements, angles, styles. Uh, one's more cartoony with exaggerated features. The other one's more like Doom-esque, you know? The other one's a little more horror-based. One's more just fast-paced. One's kind of weird. You definitely want to play around with them because in the, in, the, in the rough draft thumbnail phase, that's your chance to really just stretch yourself a bit because, you know, you might not know, you know, automatically, okay, this is definitely the style we're going for, you know? You should probably learn uh, a wide variety of different styles in order to create the best look that matches whatever your client would like. So in the thumbnail phase, you're definitely going to want to make you know, several thumbnails and many of them in different styles, if possible, unless they've already told you, okay, this is pretty much the style we're going for. If that happens, great. That saves you a ton of time. <laughs> but if sometimes they don't know, you know, so you got to give them a little, give them a little love, give them a little leeway and say, okay, so here's a couple of ideas. And so when you make these thumbnails, you want to not make them the same, definitely make them different because like I said, this is your opportunity to really stretch yourself. And if you give your client all these options, and you say okay and, and obviously because these are fast try not to spend more than an hour on each of them if if even <laughs> I don't know if, if you and your client have a really good working knowledge with one another and you've done this stuff before that's usually much faster but if not then don't spend about an hour on them because you could spend a while in this phase I know several professionals who spend like two full days on just three four thumbnails just because they know their client and their client knows them and they know okay so this is definitely the style but here's a couple of ideas for like camera 
triangle composition balance all that jazz so if you're not on that level of like familiarity with your client you're going to want to just make these kind of fast just enough to really help convey because you know you never know so in these different styles you want to make sure that the camera angle might be different you want to make sure the mood might be different try and change up as many things about the thumbnails as you can so if i was going to make another thumbnail if i if, if i had to make like a sixth thumbnail which thankfully i didn't have to but if i did i'd probably make it so the main character steel here was like really small and it showed more of the environment or more of the enemies you know and it wasn't full focus on her just so just so i could say okay here's a much wider variety of thumbnails just so i could say all right so most of these have her front center main focus and so the sixth one would just be a little different it would be like her down a little lower just more like a silhouette and the main focus would be like the environment so anyway so the client looked at these thumbnails and they said, OK, so I really like the one with her doing the power pose, the T pose, arms straight out, knee up, the enemies on either side and the kind of darker doom one, you know, even, you know, top right. That's the one. That's the one we really like. Uh, so we'll start from there. And then, you know, that's once you get the thumbnail, boom, figured out that's your starting spot. And then we start to progress and we find out the color palette. We find out uh, the best ways to create the composition. So the best possible case scenario is you make a couple thumbnails or you just make one or two thumbnails and they love it immediately and you just draw do your thing and they love everything about it and you're golden from a to b and there's no moments of ah oh, you know i think we should really try and change things up or i don't really know where the direction we're going you know now if you are for example trying to find an artist you know or an illustrator to make your thing do not ever feel bad for wanting to change things up for for wanting to uh to try something else if, if you're not satisfied with uh the the pose if you're not satisfied with the environment, if you're not satisfied with the characters, the colors, just make sure you tell your artist that as soon as possible. Really get it in there. Don't feel bad at all, okay? If you're paying for the artist's time, then, then hey, both you and the artist want to make this experience for the players as best as possible. So don't worry. And if you're an artist, which I imagine most people who are watching this are, <laughs> um, don't feel bad. Don't feel frustrated or anything. It's a great opportunity and it's, it's awesome whenever a director or a marketing manager or anybody comes at you and says, hey, look, I think it'd be really good if we, you know, X. And they're not an artist and you are. And both y'all, both y'all understand that. So don't feel like, oh my God. Ugh. If you have that mindset of this non-artist is trying to tell me, an artist, an artiste, what looks good. Oh, I can't, I can't stand, you know, don't, <laughs> don't stop, stop yourself there. The main point in this industry is to make the best, best possible uh, first impression so you're mostly you're mostly trying to you know entice players with a great a great experience and if the first experience they have of this game is the cover art you want that experience to be freaking dope you want that experience to be amazing exciting cool and true to the project and that's extraordinarily important. So don't feel bad and don't feel frustrated whenever a director comes at you with a million things and they just just paint over your stuff saying, OK, look, you know, red, red marker, just, you know, just drawing everywhere. Like, all right, <laughs> let's make sure this is good. OK, because that is that's a good that's a good director. That's a good marketing manager. You got someone who wants to tell you exactly how they're feeling. Perfect. Perfect. Don't feel bad. Don't feel self-conscious. It's not about you. It's not, and it's not about them either, really. It's like I said, it's about the player. So on that, uh, what happened at this point was uh, I grabbed a bunch of references. I shot a couple references because you know it, this pose is very interesting. So I st I stood, I put my leg up on on my chair, and I set my camera to timer mode, and I got you know like my props and stuff. <laughs> Don't feel weird about it. Just do it. And like I'm not I'm not shaped like an athletically built murder machine of a woman. <laughs> so just I mean it's the pose that I really need to worry about. Really. <laughs> so I put my camera kind of at the same distance as her and I shot the reference just so I can have something to work with so I got the the arms and the legs and it all kind of works but I you know stretched a bit for style which is still kind of nice and you know I grabbed some references of like other poses like the kicks and the, the holding the guns and all that stuff and then uh they were like hey let's put some cool actual game footage uh in there so you'll notice in the upper area there's like the lines the action lines with the circle coming down that's actually an area in the game that's like a elevator shaft that you you, know, you just like shoot through straight through and you're shooting people all the way up and down it it's really intense so we put that in there and then we just worked on the characters you know the the environment because we needed the main focus to be her and like i said this is this is where we kind of figured things out in the in the beginning stage when the thumbnail that one we knew that we could have the main character right in the middle 
and we had room for the title and we can maneuver things around if we needed to. Typically speaking, as far as design language goes, it, it goes very well for everyone. Uh, it looks good and it draws attention very well if you have the main focus and some kind of shape, a recognizable shape uh, that can sort of like isolate them from the rest of the image. So with her, I put this in this sort of like elongated diamond because a lot of the focus on, on this whole gameplay is about voxels and then the destruction of, of the environment. It's an almost completely destroyable environment. And then every time it does, little diamond shaped things chunk off, you know, and they talked about that in the notes. So I kept that in mind as I, as I made this. So part of the design language of this image was main focus separated by an image and then her just destroying things in a sort of dynamic, fast paced uh, look all the way around her. So we've got bullets flying, we got kicks and slides, and we've got glass shattering and all this cool stuff that's going on around her. And then, uh, you know, we changed a couple things. We've, we experimented with color palette and the color of the game is very, you know, neon, you know, bright, very bright, uh, very colorful, very, <laughs> very kind of in your face. So we made sure that we put that in the actual uh, artwork itself. And that's one of the things that when people tell me, oh, they love so much about the artwork is how how neon, how bright, right and how how vibrant it is as well as they loved the the motion of everything because you know you could see her sliding on the left you know with a gun aiming at people and this poor guy behind her and you know knocked out and then on the other side we have her kicking this guy which the kick mechanic is actually really important too <laughs> so sliding kicking i put as many of the main core mechanics of the game as i could in the main first impression you get of the game we got her the title the feel, the color palette, the mood, the destruction, as well as sliding and kicking mechanics, as well as also uh, the, the two main types of guard enemies I made sure to put in the bottom there. So you got a sort of very, very fast introduction to all the major key points of the game at a glance. Just a quick boom, first second, you see it, bam. Okay, wow, dang, that looks, that, you know, that's cool, that looks awesome, you know? And then the rest of it's just design language, meaning how the design elements, the shapes, the colors, etc., how they all communicate. And you'll notice almost everything, almost everything of this image points to her in the middle almost everything like even if you like look at like if you backtrack follow up the guards guns in the bottom they all kind of point upwards toward the middle the glass obviously points towards her the, the bullets everything is centralized towards her and that is like the main main thing and what's really cool actually a uh, fun side story severed steel the top title there i was just messing around i was still just drawing but then adam he's an artist himself so he was like you know what hang on <laughs> and he took you know and he made the severed steel like the metallic you know kind of grungy texture bit and he made that that fonted stuff and he's like here you think he gave it to me as a png and i was like oh sweet and i just slapped it on there and i colored it and made it all shiny and it is great. And, and like I said, the entire team, the entire process was, is really fun. And it usually is. It usually is. It's 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 a little bit of a headache sometimes, but usually it's like a good headache. Like it's it's an exciting headache. <laughs> this one, though, no headache at all. It's just fun the entire way through. Uh, and, you, and you don't actually have to like, you know, be hired by anybody to make artwork like this. This I love making artwork like this anyway. A central figure, too, with a kind of broad message about, you know, a mechanic or a story beat of some kind. That's, that's just most of my artwork anyway. So, you know, I make this stuff all the time. And eventually, you know, you'll increase your portfolio value as, as somebody makes some pretty decent, you know, cover art, depending on whatever style you're going for. And, and you should definitely experiment with styles, you know, make some photo bash, matte paintings, make some, you know, drawn stuff. Pixel art would be good, too. Pixel art's picking up a whole lot. Anyway, hopefully you found this uh, helpful, useful, entertaining. You know, leave a like if you liked it, a dislike if you dislike it, sub to see more. And thank you so much to my amazing patrons. I appreciate the ever-loving out of you for supporting the ever-loving out of me. And you can find me, uh, you know, social links down below if you're ever curious. Thank you all so much to uh, Digirati as well, because this was a really fun project, and I'm really grateful I didn't have to sign any NDAs. <laughs> yeah, see you on the next one.